show, hosted by me, Young Buck, directed by Bro Jackson, Westbound ENT. Today we're in Fairfield, 707, with B John. See where we at with it, Fairfield, I love you. Boy Monk and this motherfucker, man. We here. Yeah. You gotta come see what's up in Fairfield, though, yeah, right? I, yeah, it's my first time in Fairfield. I ain't even gonna lie. First time in Fairfield. How yeah. you like it so far, though? Man, it was lovely. We was pulling in, I was tripping off all the different food spots, you know what I mean? I was like, okay, we gotta stop at some on the way out. That's mandatory. Got to put you up on some mandatory. You got Kinder's right across the way. You got Joe's Buffet, which is a staple. You got Dave's Burger, you know what I'm saying? You got a few few different yeah. few different arrangements. Um, but welcome to Fairfield, man. I hope your stay yeah. is cool. We're going to show you around a little bit some. This is the stove, Fairfield. I love you. Need your drip, you know what I'm saying? We'll be here for three years. Yeah. Three years. We opened up before COVID. And um, we had, you know what I'm saying, maneuvered through COVID and yeah. whatnot. Shake, shiver and shake. And uh, we still here with it. So I'm, I'm glad you're here. Work, Still making it work. So Still what you got it. in here? What you got in here? So we got the clothing line, Fairfield. I love you. You can see it right here. The whole brand. Um, you know what I'm saying? We got different variations. You know what I'm saying? This is the classic bread joint right here. We 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 had yeah. this because this is uh, basically the school colors right here, Fairfield High. So that's kind of a staple. We done did many units on that one. Yeah. Um, you see the Christmas colors, so we got to switch it up. Make sure we uh, stay seasoned and in tune, you know what I'm saying, with different moments on the calendar. Yeah. Um, you see, we got not only our stuff, but um, other local designers as well. You know what I'm saying? You can see, bro, Ski did his thing, Island Gate Ski. You feel me, saying? We showcase oh, yeah, other designers crazy. Yeah. come through in here, you know what I'm saying? Not just for us. We don't charge nobody, none of that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just a little bit of a consignment when anything sells. We, we split a little bit of something, take a little piece out of it. That's it. You know what I'm saying? You can see all this. I'm from the flats. This is a collab with Stressmatic. You feel me? Yeah. Stressmatic. So we like to collaborate with the people that are um, within within tune, you know what I'm saying, that are making a movement. So we've done collabs with Stressmatic. We've done collabs with uh, other foundations in the city, like Matt Garcia Foundation. You know what I'm saying? Different uh, sneaker things. See, we got the sneaker love. We love sneakers over here. You feel me? Yeah, man, though, that's man, You feel me? You feel me? <laughs> I see you got the kicks over there, too. Them's for sale, too. Man. It's a consignment thing. Good young pandas. These ain't even consignment. This is all us. You feel me? So, you know what I'm saying? We got inventory. We ain't, we ain't doing no consignment. It's us. We give them jugs, too. So, you pull up, you getting big jug. You feel me? That's how we do. We like to make sure we, we uh, you know, give to the community where we can. You know what I'm saying? We ain't, we ain't head busting none of that. You feel me? Yeah. That's where it's at. So, yeah, different local designers. We also got other designers in the uh, showcasing over there, too. So, it ain't just about us. It's about showcasing other creatives um, and creating a platform, having a platform. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not only clothes in here, too. We got the Freestyle Friday that we do every Friday where we showcase an artist that's, you know what I'm saying, local, that's doing yeah, their thing. Have them come through, perform, you know what I'm saying? Showcasing. Showcase them. It's, 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 it's our extra duty. content they can have in post. It's extra content, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Because it's not just a video. It's not just a music video. It's literally them performing live. Yeah. You feel me? So we opened up that. Um, yeah, man, three years. Man, it's been a long time, but uh, as long as we're here, we, we intend to keep this thing here, man. Yeah, hell yeah, Fairfield, I love you. So, man, that, that means you, you rep Fairfield hard. So let us know about how it was out here growing up. You know what I mean? That differentiates you from other cities in the Bay. Fairfield is a unique place, man. I tell this um, to a lot of people that I see every day, and I have to come up with new ways of saying it. But um, Fairfield is, is a specific place, man, where, uh, I don't know, I was talking to my boy from the, from the Pittsburgh, and he was like, it's, it's, it's kind of on the outskirts of the Bay Area and kind of not um, respected as a... a as a place of culture, you know what I'm saying? As a yeah. place of um, dynamics. So we switched it around, switched the narrative around, and um, Fairfield breeds this unique place because we can go to the, to the city quick. We can go to, to the Bay really fast, yeah. or we can go to SAC really fast. Yeah. So we get both of both, uh, best of both worlds. And growing up out here, man, it's, um, things changed. Like a lot of people came from the, uh, the military background. Yeah. So a lot of families, if you've been here for a long time, somebody in your family served in the military at one way or another from the Traverse Air Force Base. So it's, we a lot of descendants from there. A lot of people came from Hamilton Air Force Base too. So that's where a lot of the history came from. And um, 
it's always ever changing. Like we get a lot of people that come from other towns, a lot of people that came from Vallejo, Richmond, a lot of people came from the city yeah. and uh in the town off out here. and came out here. It's a little bit cheaper. Yeah. So um yeah, man, growing up, you had to you had to be on your P's and Q's. You feel what I'm saying? I specifically grew up in Salinas Park area. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? That's on the east side. And um man, you know, a lot of people, that's kinda like a lot of uh, Metal Lark area, Taji Spitz from over that area too. Yeah. So it's a lot of uh, a lot of history from over there. A lot of Orions, um, Salinas Park crew. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the OGs. We came up, went to Grange Middle School. You feel what I'm saying? Um, people know about Grange Middle School. You had to be on your grizzly at Grange Middle School for <laughs> real. Yeah. You really yeah. did. Um, and then to the high. So Fairfield High. I mean, that's pretty. Uh, synonymous with Fairfield. Yeah. People know about the high. So um you really had to be on your P's and Q's, man. Um but it was a lot of music influence. When I was in the high, the Federation was at the all time high. So yeah. I say this this moment that changed my life when the Federation came through and performed at lunchtime at the high school it changed my at life. Fairfield High. At Fairfield okay. High. Yeah. They literally came through and took over the lunch in the quad area. And uh, the funniest thing is, though, I was linked in. So in high school, there was this thing called the Bay Area Big Shot. That was a long time ago on 106 KML. It was a contest for all under um, underground artists. Underground yeah, artists. Just to get spun on there. Just huh? to get spun. Yeah. I think Go Dave was on there. I think uh, a few other cats was on there. But um, we had became a finalist on one of them. And um, we was moving and shaking. I was producing. Um, we was battling at lunchtime, and uh, so I linked up with Stress. Yeah, Stress was the first person, Stressmatic from the Federation, yep. at his all-time high. We was lit, though, me and my yeah. brody, and uh, we had a song featuring Stress. I produced the beat. It was a Rocky sample, Yeah, and um, I'm already linked in, so I'm already tapped in. So it wasn't like, oh, I've never seen these artists, and they come in to perform. I had a song with Stress. We on the Bay Area Big Shot thing, yeah. and they coming to perform. So it was like almost this is real. Like this could really I'm about happen. To set this up right now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, just that moment right there changed my life. Just changed my life. But we was already linked in with stress. Um, so we already been moving and shaking within the field. And uh, the history is just is a lot of musical history that people don't know about in Fairfield. Yeah. So we here to amplify. We here to. Retell the story. We here to show, show, showcase the story, show life to the story, rebreathe life into the story, and then it goes. This goes on after Fairfield, like say the Gemini's. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's, 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 it's so much talent right now too that um everybody we grew up with is moving. Yeah. Everybody we grew up with is moving. So I love it. I love it. Man, what was a day like growing up out here? So, um, a day like growing up in Fairfield. It could get uh, it could get a little sticky sometimes. Yeah. Um, because it don't be nothing to do. So, we waking up. You know what I'm saying? If it's nothing to do, it's always some bread to be a, to, Man, to be yeah. getting had, right? That's and that's the mo motto we wake up. That's the motivation we wake up to. Is like, I gotta wake up and get to it. Yeah. I don't know if it's the Mac Dre's or the Forties yeah. we listening to, or, or the uh, the hustle innate in us, or the out the trunk. But um, yeah, we had to, to get it. to it. Yeah. We had to get to it. So. Uh, that could be a few things. That could be a few things. Um, it's always easily to get spotted out here because it's not so big, though. If yeah. you're trying to maneuver, you know what I'm saying, underground. Yeah. It's always easily, it's a small place. So, so you're going to run into them, whoever you look. Yeah. You're, you're going to run into somebody. Um, but me and my family and, 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 and the people that I rock with, we always kind of been the cool cats yeah. and just been neutral. Cool with yeah. everybody. We ain't really like, it ain't no choosing sides and none of that. It's always kind of being in neutral yeah. and making money, making it green, right? Yeah. Making sure the business is good. And that's how it's always been, whether it's been a little bit of the uh, greenery, you know what I'm yeah. saying? A little bit of whatever it may be. But the whole idea was to grow up and to um, smarten up when, yeah. we, when we was moving. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Smarten up. So we looked, to, looked up to people that had legitimate businesses. Like, my auntie had a legitimate hair salon. She'd been here for 20 years. 20 yeah, years. Know. You know what I'm saying? So, we looked at people like that to kind of shape us and how the routes to go and which way to go. But 
It was the it, basketball kind of kept us out of a lot of yeah. trouble. I, I'm, I'm gonna say myself. Okay. And music, yeah. music saved our life. Music saved our life because it because when we thought of other things to do, it's like hoop or music. Yeah. So we was early, 13, 14, making music, having motherfuckers throw us deals. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Stuff like that. So we got on it early and and try to um, develop fast and mature fast. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Club Fuji should be smacking on out here, man. Fairfield. So Fairfield is the home of Joe's Buffet. Joe's Buffet? Joe's Buffet. What makes it, what makes like it a, different, though? Joe's Buffet is... um. Joe's Buffet makes it different because, I mean, I don't know, it's different in terms of everywhere else because, I don't know, the, the meat be hella thick when I get the food over yeah. there, um, the roast beef on point, um, it's kind of like a regular delicatessen at every every city, though, yeah. but, but it's home to Fairfield, I don't know if it could be because I feel like I'm related to them, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, shout out Joe, the roast beef on point. Uh, we finna make a fair for I love your sandwich too. We gotta make that happen. Yeah. All right, Joe. All right, but nah, the, it's this cool little spot. It's in downtown Fairfield. It's right under the Fairfield sign too, so it's kind of a staple for the area. Yeah, hell yeah. What else? What else? What else is smacking? So what else? Here? Let me go to um, shoot. Shed Soul. Shed Soul is a soul food. The soul food place in Fairfield. And um, Shed Soul. Shed okay. Soul. So right. shout out Chef Tizzy Teasy uh, for messing it up. But um, yeah, that's in downtown too. That's usually uh, the go-to for any soul food joint out here. The chicken is fire, the gumbo fire, um, and the red velvet cake goes stupid too. So okay. um, that's a staple. Um, Dave's Burger, right on North Texas, is a staple. Um, it's a lot of other places. What you get at Dave's Burger? Dave's Burger, I just get the, the cheeseburger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Run it up with the tots. Tots are cool sometimes, but... Uh, yeah, they don't got no fries though. They don't right. got no fries, so you gotta rock up the tots. Uh, Dave's Burger though been around for many moons. Dave's Burger is a staple though. Mm hmm. Hell yeah. I'm trying to think of what else out here. Um, it's some people recently getting on their grizzly. Um, selling plates, huh? Selling this plates, yeah, yeah, selling plates. Um, shoot, let me see. Chef uh, Peasy, Peasy Fish Fry went stupid. I know he finna revamp his thing. He had the fish fry going crazy out here. Yeah. Um, I think it's like uh, Miss Potato Head, she go crazy. Um, it's a few other spots though, so shout out all the people on that Grizzly cooking up them plates though, for real. There was any uh, uh, food spots that you was growing up that ain't around no more that you was, you missed? You be like, damn man, they ain't bring that one back. That's a good question. I don't know about food spots. I know about hangout spots though. Yeah, like, yeah tell me about that. You used to have the skating ring. Skating ring is I'm. If y'all know, yeah, that's Fairfield, you, you know about the skating rink, huh? Yeah, yeah, we had one in our city. Okay, so skating yeah. ring was the shit, and everybody used to come from everywhere on Saturday nights for the skating ring, uh, right on North Texas. Uh, it's been gone for many moons, but it was right next to the bowling alley. Bowling alley was right over there too, right up the way. And since them been on gone, them been gone for damn near 15, 15, damn. 15 years, quite yeah. some time. But that's all we had. That's so Saturday night, that's where you was meeting everybody. Yeah, everybody, was, yeah. everybody, going there. Schools, we had active uh, yeah. schools going trips there. There were some different schools in there. Uh, Man, uh, all day. Yeah. I'm telling you, Saturday nights was a nice though. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah. Saturday nights, it could get ugly in there though. Yeah, it could get ugly, but you 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 might leave with something. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You might leave with something. Um, but yeah, the skating ring. I know Alan Witt was always a thing too. Alan Witt, the park, the uh, skate park, they just revamped that too. So um, they took down a few basketball courts too, but I think they revamped those and put those back up. So we 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 get into a better place. I think we revamping the skating ring too. Yeah. Um, I know it's been a few uh, companies and initiatives over there, like organizations revamping the uh, skating ring. So that's gonna be exciting to see what they do with that. Cause we miss it. No, there's nowhere for people to go. There's nowhere for the youth to go to kind of, you know, congregate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about uh, your music influences? So, my music influences, being from Fairfield, California, got to be obviously the Rick Rocks, the Federations, um, the E40s, um, but also kind of to the East Coast too, like the Jay Zs, uh, Lil Wayne's. Yeah. Um, some nip, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but growing up, Bay influence, Mac Dre's, you know, there's a lot of the Bay influence, but yeah. 
we kind of mixed it with the spitting and the East Coast flavor. And um, yeah, that's kind of what I was raised off of. But moms had me on like old school stuff, AJ. like OJs. Yeah. So I'm sampling stuff, honestly producing. Um, that helped me with producing, just knowing musicality, just knowing bars, you know what I'm saying? Um, and just that old school feel. That old school feel is, is um, it never goes away. It never goes away. So, um, try to think. Other producing skill. I mean, other producing. EA Ski, shoot. Yeah. EA Ski, um, Show Enough. Yeah. In terms of keeping like Bay. Yeah. Um, Sean T. Sean T. Yeah. Um, Rob Lowe. <laughs> Big Rob Lowe. Um, I'm trying to think who else, who else, who else. Uh, that's pretty much it in terms of um, influence, though. Uh, yeah, a lot of the uh, mixed East Coast with the Bay, with uh, some of that down South stuff. I'm, I'm all over the place, yeah. honestly, with my no, music. No, no, that's, that's, that's why it's dope. At what, at what age did you know that you was going to get into this music where it was going to be such a, uh, you know, a passion for you like this? Um, I, honestly, I say like, as a kid, um, as a teenager, kind of when I was like 13, 14, to realize this could be a career yeah. and, and deals and um, making money off beats and, and stuff like that, that's when I realized this can, you know, really happen. Um, but I never understood the consistency. Yeah. I always thought it was uh, it's secondary. You know what I'm saying? And once you realize that it's a priority and you turn it to uh, being very consistent with it like you would a job, that's when you start seeing those results. That's when you start realizing. I feel like you're just a little bit lucky when you're younger. Yeah. And then when you really want to make it a career, that's when you busting down feet to the concrete every day doing something musically yeah, yeah. and um then something productive towards a career something productive towards a career and uh if you're not doing one hour a day something an yeah. hour a day towards your career even if you got another gig right because you still got to do things to figure things out right yeah um but you got to dedicate something to the career so um once i started doing that and realizing this is tangible um and this is, I'm going to create regardless, right? Yeah. So if I can make anything off of this or make this some type of career, um, let's do it. Just be consistent with it. So um, when I was young, I think that's when it hit to me. Yeah. Yeah. But it still hits to me. still hits to me like, it don't be real that like people still buying our merch. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It don't be real to me sometimes. Um, but when I do it consistently, that's when it starts programming Start to my mind. Like, yeah, like boom, boom. boom. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's dope. You remember the first song uh, you heard? Like you was like, okay, yeah, this I love hip hop. First album you bought? Dog food, by the dog pound. Yeah, moms bought that. I didn't even buy that. She but was mom, slapping that, and he was like, okay, <laughs> what? Let's play house. That album right there, man. Uh, man, that album slapped front to back. Daz Dillinger production on there. Yeah. Um, I think it's some. Uh, I think Dre got a little bit of stuff on there. That's when everybody used to focus on albums as yeah. a unit. Um, and that album, their lyrical wordplay, their steez, yeah. their skits, everything on there was just like raw. Yeah. And it was gangster music though too, right? But moms, and now I play something like that. Moms are good pissed at me <laughs> but at that time um man i can't believe that album so many that album is a reflection of my production Lincoln about uh, ever now because it's slap right yeah but it got a few samples in there yeah. and it's fly too, and it's yeah. fly too it got yeah. some you know what i'm saying so that's a pretty well-rounded album and reflects me kind of how i am today yeah. Um, thinking back about that now, man. And production fire, right? Solid sonically, that album probably one of the best group albums of hip hop, yeah. Like history. I think New York, New York was on there too, wasn't it? Yeah. New York, New York, big city, man. That was probably, yeah. In terms of rap, yeah. That yeah. album changed me. I think that's probably why I always think of groups first too. I was in a group first, 
Um, young hitters, TK. We we didn't had hella names. Shout out my brother EP. Um, we was talking about worst coast riders and sickness yeah. net. Uh, back if y'all know, y'all know about that. Yeah, let right? them know about it. Let them know about it. What was so, your, yeah. sickness.net, West Coast Riders. That was when. That's how you found your music. That's how you found your music, right? It was like yeah. the Dat Piffs. It was like the Dizzlers. It yeah. was like. Dizzler wasn't even around then, no, was it? Wasn't, it was like Bay on Tops and all that. Yeah, Bay yeah. on Tops. So, this was. Look, we're going back into uh, internet nerd mode. But this is how all the stuff, connections is built right now. I guarantee yeah. anybody that's on top or doing something in the Bay, they was linked in back then. But um, you should download all your. I think there's still some websites up yeah. right now that you can download shit on there. But uh, West Coast Riders is like the hub for all Bay stuff or West Coast stuff in general, yeah. and Sickness.net, and then it, Bart. I think was yeah, Bart a thing yeah, too. Bart, yeah. Bay Area Rap tr- yeah. Transit or something like that. Yeah. Um, That's how you got your music. You knew it was popping. You New knew videos, it was popping. Yeah, you had to be events, tapped in. Yeah. Yes. So we've been on that for. We've been rocking for a minute. Oh, grab a leaf? Hell yeah, big grab a leaf. You know what yeah. I'm saying? What'd you fuck with? Uh, I was in the leaves too. We had the leaves in the car too. Okay. Oh, the grab a leaf? Yeah, backwoods, papers, whatever. Yeah, I don't be on the flavor uh, backwards though, niggas. They, uh, they stopped that, didn't they? Yeah, they do. But I still got smoke shops in, in my city that I can get it from. Like, the Virgin yeah. Springs. Yeah. I don't fuck with this flavor. Ever since I had the uh, flavor, and the motherfuckers give you a headache. Uh, I can't fuck with it, bro. Only OG or I'm good. So we like the gravels, huh? Gravel that's, that's what we bro was talking about. It's that OG flavor, nothing at all. Nothing at all. Yeah. I just need the OG. Yeah, smoke shop more, 1306, slide through. You already know what's up. Hell yeah. It's your boy D-Rock. Slide through, I got y'all. Hell yeah, we shot my mold video right here. Shout out Shill Mac. Shout out Pizzo, the heater man. Right in this thing right here. Shout out Shill Mac, said it was good money. Shout out Shill Mac, you know what I'm saying? Big flamery. Um, Fairfield, you know what I'm saying? It's Fairfield, basically. Shout out to the homies that got their brands up in here, you know what I'm saying? Put their brands up and whatnot. And uh, yeah, still $5 too. Yeah. Motherfuckers want they seven or whatever. Five of them, five of them. You feel me? My boys, thank you for real. I appreciate it. It's good. Smoke shop motherfuckers be out here getting off their Drosky or whatever. You feel me? But yeah, man, it is. West Texas, Fairfield, Triple H right here. So if you need to get get updated with your drippery, you know what I'm saying? So you get fly out Triple H. That's, that's been a staple forever. If you ain't at my shop, you feel me? You getting dripped over there, you know what I'm saying? Get the tees, you know what I'm saying? Get the hoodies, get whatever you need. See, it's a little, it's a little uh, West Texas get a little, little uh, flavorful, I should say, over here, you know what I'm saying? Trying to make ends meet, you feel me? It ain't all, all sweet over here, so. It is what it is, but this Fairfield smoke shot. You see what I'm saying? Smoke more. Fresh brown, fresh brown entertainment. Creature K on the beat. California, right off Travis. You see the sign right there at Travion Gardens. Travion Gardens. Travion Gardens, right next to the Fairfield Cemetery fire station, right here. This is where me and bro grew up. Us two, my Dukes. The first place we came to, I came to straight from that Vallejo <coughs> Kaiser. You feel me? Straight from Vallejo Kaiser because it was no hospital out here to be born. Mom's Delivered me in Kaiser Vallejo. We came right here, 1609. You remember what apartment it was? I couldn't tell you. I know it's down here to the left. I mean, you know, to the know. right uh, on, the, on the left. So right there. Come on, fuck it. Come on. Shit been changed up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Might be somebody moving. They used to have, what they used to have over here? Some some little seating area right here. Yeah, a little seating thing around. This there. was the courtyard. It had like uh, 
I guess the uh, forger or whatever, the forge shit right here yeah. with the little brick. You remember the little bricks thing they used to have? And then uh, laundry mats over there. <laughs> and uh, I remember. Apartment one. Yeah, we're in apartment one right here. Right in that mug right there. Right next to the laundry mat. You know what I'm saying? Right next to the laundry mat. I don't know if be in the laundry mat. Sleeping. Hey, I'll tell you this motherfucker. My room is be right back over there. The parking lot. Grab y'all guards, man. Feel like yesterday. I remember. Young boy. Ride my bike. Ice cream truck came through, right? Yeah. Ice cream truck. Nigga was so juiced, needed the ice cream so bad. Nigga damn near ran into the stairs as a young kid like this. Mom, mom, come give me some ice cream. Come give me some ice cream. I need some ice cream. Bow! Hit my shit. Dunzo. Dunzo. You see what I'm saying? Just like little, little shit like that. Swimming pool in the back. Pops damn near. Pops usually wasn't around like that, but Pops, I think, damn near came one time. Save somebody's life. Somebody Save somebody's life. Drowned. In the pool, I swear to God. <laughs> I swear to God. Pops is like a damn near renowned, from what he tells us, a renowned swimmer in Iran. This nigga came, seen a little baby go in there. Damn near baby was turning blue in the deep yeah. end. This nigga dove in there, grabbed him, resuscitated him. Man, dumbass stories, just stupid ass stories. Who you, Ramon used to stay in here. The yeah. few cats that came from out of here um, yeah. that we grew up with. But nah, Travion Gardens, they kind of changed it up a little bit. But this is our first breaths, our first steps at Fairfield for sure. Mm -hmm. Parking lot back here. Park a lot. Trash used to be. All this shit is different though right now. Yeah. I think our cameras in here now. They didn't have no cameras. No cameras. <laughs> No camera. That means shit. Little shit going on, probably. You feel right, me? Even this parking was different. This side, did, it wasn't like this. It was this way. Oh yeah, way. this way. Like how that is over there. Mm -hmm. You don't oh, notice that shit. Yeah. Too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't notice that shit till fucking. You know what I mean? Yeah, but good old Travis all guards, babe. Right off Travis, though. A lot of memories. A lot of stories from here. It's kind of the first thing. Mom Dukes, us too. You know what I'm saying, bro? Bro, has, bro grew up fast, huh? We playing, grew up fast. Playing huh? football back here and shit. Playing football. football. Back here, up there. All types of shit. This is before the motherfuckers started, you know. Internet started shit. Started getting into the girls and shit like that. This is a little bit before that, so it's still a little bit of innocence. But, you know, your environment is going to teach you a lot. So it's all about, you know, what, the, what you see in your environment. And so this was like the beginning of the environment. There's a school right over here. Bransford. Um, like you can see it right there. Um, yeah, a lot of good memories, though. <coughs> a lot of good memories. Hella good memories. I had a couple dope ass birthday parties over here. Had this shit filled up, you know, because it ain't that much space now. When you little, you think it's so big, right? Yeah. And now you look at this shit, you like, damn, we can put our arms to both sides of that shit right there. <laughs> right up. <laughs> uh, this stuff right here, right? This is our room. Yeah. This is our room back here. That room, yeah. This mom, mom's room. Yeah. That's our room. Niggas had the bunk beds, niggas had the dinosaurs and shit, nigga. Yeah. You feel me? They got stuff that dinosaur and shit. Bunk beds, this nigga used to be getting mad at me, shit. Man. What was the day like out here when you was growing up? Shit. Out? Outside, really. Yeah. Before, I, I mean, now it's called outside, but niggas yeah. was really outside, you feel me? Um, shit. Riding bikes. Might get your bike stolen. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of sports. A lot of know, sports. sports. A lot of sports. Always, you know, trying to get into some shit. Yeah. Sports. Playing. Might get on some Nintendo games and shit. Go over to, you know, whoever got the newest Nintendo shit or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, we had shit though too, but, you know, that shit kept popping up. Whatever's new. Sega. Sega. Super you know, Nintendo. Super Nintendo. And then um, niggas took it to, uh, hoop. Niggas was always hooping though. Our uncle used to hoop at USF and the shit. Uh, all the shit, so we, um, what is it, City League? Niggas was hard City League. I remember City League when you was young, fucking had the small hoops. Nigga, I was 
bopping, nigga. Yeah. Young nigga bopping. This nigga was like, oh, my little bro bopping. I used to be in there, bow. Nigga, NJB. You know what I'm saying? Niggas know NJB. And um, shit. Then niggas moved to uh, <coughs> Park, really. Yep. With grandma. Niggas moved into grandma's house. That was kind of like adolescent, you know what I'm saying? Middle school-ish. Yeah. Um, niggas can understand shit a little bit more, not really playing and shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, older. we took it to Selena's Park and um, that kind of started where the music shit created, you feel me? Travi on guard, man, feel good to be back over here, man. Um, yeah, what's some crazy shit you seen growing up out here? What you say on camera? <laughs> I mean, Fairfield is a place where it's a lot of, uh, sometimes it'd be a zombie land, you know? It'd be zombie land, I think. You never know, you never know. It's a lot of people that grew up with, a lot of people that um, see on, you know what I'm saying? On the wrong way. Yeah, lost. Lost, and it's almost lifeless, you know what I'm saying? You see people lifeless, like it, it, it ain't nothing to strive for. <coughs> um, yeah, we do seen some, some motherfuckers lifeless, bro. Yeah. And it's like, bring that hope, you feel me? Yeah. Where that hope is at, where the hope is at, not even like, you could be cool, all this money and all this shit, and I like to say, like, anybody can take from the city, but what you giving back, you feel me? So all that shit that we've seen is like, what you giving back to the city? So that kind of, all those stories and all those things that we saw growing up is what fueled us. And motherfuckers be like, we, don't, we hate Fairfield, we wanna leave Fairfield, we wanna get out of Fairfield. Nah, but you, once you like get rid of all the uh, negative, you know what I'm saying? And realize that people lost hope sometimes, this shit ain't easy, right? Especially being kind of a lot of people from those areas that I said before that came out here. Nigga, this a place to get lost. <laughs> yeah, straight up. Feel me? You don't have to worry about shit. Don't got to be seen by your family too much. You feel what I'm saying? If your yeah. family in the other parts, feel me? You just get lost. And it's like big crystal out here. Chris is ice huge out here. Feel yeah. me? A lot of motherfuckers on that shit. So, try to rechange that in there. That's why you see a lot of uh, shit on the side and shit. You know what I'm saying? People just lost living on yeah. the street. So, try to change that up, man. Try to build this narrative up as like, you still got a chance. This shit ain't over. What was the closest uh, Kona store that you went to around here? What would y'all go to get y'all, you know what I mean? Uh, if you don't say this. They used to have a spot right here, down here, called Hollandary. It's like a drive through spot. Yeah. Drive through yeah. liquor store. Older, uh, older gentleman, and he, uh, it's unfortunate, he ended up getting killed in the damn store. Oh, shit. So, yeah, we'll probably drive by there, I'll show you, and this shit ain't been, it's all boarded off, it's been that way ever since. Um, Somebody, yeah. So yeah, that's where we used to go, to the corner store with moms, my, or you know what I'm saying, run down there. Um, that was the one, you know, one of them pull up drive through. Yeah. You let them know what you want, they gonna bring it to your car. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, you yeah. Said the fucking what is those go uh, bear on the fucking ice cream? The fucking what is that? The uh, got with that polar bear ice cream. You yeah, just you know that. everything, and like I said, got killed in the damn store and shit like that. Stuff like stuff like that be happening, and it's like man, so that shit all boarded up. So you know, it's like. Well, that's what our mind, or with me in my mind, it's like, man, you know what? I'll bring something like that back. You know what I mean? Yeah. You see something boarded up like that, we can't just let it sit like that. Nah, go buy that land. Over you feel something. what I'm yeah, saying? Over something. Yeah, yeah, get it back you know what I mean? Or maybe buy the land or something, give it back to the... Maybe the family still owns it, I would assume, probably, or however that was, but just try to, you know, bring back their memories, man. Hollandary. <laughs> Hollandary, man. Yeah. Unfortunate. Yep. It's like... Out here, we lose a lot of hope. I go back to what we were saying, like even Matt Garcia. Matt Garcia was one of the youngest political politicians, uh, I think, with city 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 council to be yeah. elected to city council. And 
end up getting smoked. Take them out the game. Yeah. Soon yeah. as soon as there was some success, I feel like our leaders just get taken out the way, taken out the game. So uh, our thing is to just uplift that, uh, sh shed light on those legacies, and, and try to continue those out. Feel me? Cause they was trying to change shit. People trying to change stuff, and unfortunately, shit happens. This where a nigga hit his fucking key. Right here, nigga. <laughs> Like my though. boy don't be stepping around nah, this hold on, hold on. But the love is real because Ro been rocking. He came to fuck with us in LA. For sure. When we first started the shop, Bro was the first one that pulled up on us. For sure, for sure. I kid you not. When my nigga choose up. Don't forget I kid about you not. choose up. Don't cheese. forget they choose up. Like, I didn't even see you. I drove right by you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hold on. Congratulations, back back man. I know. I know. I know. Yeah. Got a little, little young one on the way, or a little long, young one here, huh? Yeah, yeah, another Damn. little girl. Damn. Nah, but Island Gang Ski, for real. Real factor, you know what I'm saying? Sure. It's only right. This is a Fairfield documentary. We going around. It was supposed to happen like this. It's supposed to. <laughs> it's supposed to. <laughs> yeah, man. It's only right. Just a, just a slide through, and the nigga hit where, where we thought he was. <laughs> <laughs> In the ghetto. Nigga. Hell yeah. Yep. I'm on your line, Ski. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm on your line. Yeah. 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 You want to have some shit coming too? Creature camp. Shit, where we at? Shit, we at Talinas Park. You know what I'm saying? We went through a little Salinas stroll. Park? Okay. Salinas Park. Yeah. We on the east side of Fairfield, you feel me? This is where niggas used to smoke. This is where niggas used to play football. Used to have Metal Lark come over here, Metal Lark versus Talinas, you feel me? Uh, football games, you know what I'm saying? But we went through, shit, we went through where? Salinas Park, I mean, we went through Travion Gardens. We went through- uh, Phoenix. Phoenix, slid through Bristol. We went through Grande Circle. Stop through with my the Cuddy, uh, the boy boy Skeezy, and uh, he got some shit at the store right now. Speaking yeah. of, he a designer, oh, yeah, Island yeah. Gang Ski, some there, got some clothes right? at the store right now. So this real life wasn't scripted, didn't hit him up. Um, yeah, and that's how it be. We used to stop at that store, Major Market, every day, walking home from Grange Middle School. I was telling them Grange Middle School was the one, right? Yeah, Grange Middle School right down the way. That made champs right there. Down. Yeah. But um, Tabor, Tabor go pretty much East Tabor. That's where everything off of that. So, and, and Dover Villa was right next to the Grande Circle right there. And um, we had Tolina Spark. You just kind of damn near the end of Fairfield. It used to be the end of Fairfield. Yeah. Because yeah, the true. Air Force Base right over there. But uh, a lot of people moved to this, to this area specifically from that Air Force Base. So it's a lot of um, military brats and shit like that over here. But niggas used to smoke over here. Niggas and did yeah. crazy shit over here. This is like, <laughs> what? 
This is the roundabout, nigga. The main. Yeah, we used to call this the horseshoe. So basically, you know, this is on some late night shit. You got a bitch, all this shit. Put a car through here, and it's just like, man, thank you. No one ever really called the police on us. <laughs> For real. Right here, yeah. you know, everything. You know what I'm saying? Like fucking bitch in the car, all yeah. the shit, right here. Um, you know, back when niggas didn't have spots and shit like that, but um. You know, smoking, you know what I'm saying? Nigga, I got robbed right here before. <laughs> For an eighth, nigga, that's yeah, hella funny. Young niggas, you know what I'm saying? So this is like, because, you know, back in the day, you know, you outside, you're not really fucking with no phone and shit like that, you know? Yeah. A little OG, so it's like, you know, man, you know. Niggas wasn't getting phones till like, you know, midway high school, a little bit after that. And even after then, there wasn't so much you could do on a cell phone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Motherfuckers wasn't even really texting mm-hmm. back then. Yeah. You know, it's just phone, phone. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Phone. You know what I mean? So, like, you got to find something to do. You know what I mean? So, we, you know what I mean? fucking around. He said football, baseball. Uh, this is definitely the first time I smoked. I smoked a BD. Like you what, what, smoked a BD? Y'all fucked with BDs before? Yeah. Yeah? That's the first thing I ever smoked Yo, right I here. smoked a BD. Yeah, first yeah. BD. Yeah. It was on that yeah. motherfucking yeah. table right there. Stone tables. Yeah, stone tables. The stone tables. Niggas used to see, what, Orion and niggas used to be over here? All type of shit, man. This is the beginning of trouble. (laughs) All these memories that I remember is like, that's where, you know, you get with your older homies right there and all this shit. Niggas influence you to do some shit that you shouldn't be doing. You know what I mean? Skipping school, fucking, you know what I mean? Shit that you shouldn't be doing right there. Right here in this area, you know, you come up out the house and you fucking, you know, it is what it is, man. It is what cool. It is. Fun times, memories, shit that molded, you know, into a man and you know what I mean. Nigga Fuck got blurped head. over here. Nigga got blurped by the sheriff right over there. Yeah, definitely. Grandma blurred. came through and no shit, my grandma came through. It was like, get my grandson out of that damn back of that car. She got me out that motherfucking car. I don't know how it was, whatever grace it was. Grab, I got that wizard. But she did that. Got me out of that thing, man. Yeah, man. They ever make y'all stomp the tree out? Stomp the tree out? Luckily, yeah. we never had no too many issues like that. Uh, yeah, I remember nah. smoking at a park once, a bike house. <laughs> See, the thing is, this That's is on the edge. Of, this is on the edge of Fairfield. So, in order for the police to come over here, usually someone called them. It's not like they just come in, you know what I mean? They're they not just pro- driving through. Uh, they they not, a little bit. Once, once, if you know, if, if you know, a little trouble here and there, then they're going to start making their rounds every now and then. But for the most part, during that time, it wasn't really coming around here. Like, they stopped kind of like where we was just at. They probably stopped right when we passed that little supermarket, that little uh, liquor store. You could turn left. That would be Clay Bank, and that will take you right back to Air Base Parkway, take you up out of here. So they probably stopped, like, right there. Come over here, it's really like, you know, you got to be called over here for the most part, you know. Or if not, we was out smarting them. Shit, what did you do? I look it because it's only. It's two yeah, it's only two here. ways, two ways boom, in. Boom. Yeah. And they don't usually come through the back. Yeah, now if anybody coming through here, you come from right there. You can see them already, you know? Yeah. From right here, you can see them. So even if they did come from the back, which would be the other entrance, you can see them right here too. So you know what I mean? It's like by the time they get over here, <laughs> they get up out of here. What's some crazy shit you seen growing up out here? Uh, over here? Yeah, over here. This part. I guess it's like, you think, cause you know, it, it, it's a fairly nice neighborhood. You know what I mean? But there still be some shit going on in these houses. It's still active. You know yeah, what I mean? It's still active. Even me being personally just uh, put in the wrong direction. Like niggas was jump running in these houses and shit. Me personally, how you run into your neighbor's house trying to get some shit, you know what yeah. I mean? And then go play with them at school the next day. Just on some dumb shit, you feel yeah. what I'm saying? Um, niggas, parents get into fights, shooting shit. Mm-hmm. The house right there, they shot the camper over there. Parents fighting, you know what I mean? Countless fights over here, just, you know, and he was growing up. A couple drug spots over here. You know. But around this area, pretty much everybody know everybody. They yeah. do. If you all coming up around the same age, you know what I mean? So you know who live at the end of the court, star court. You know who, you know what I mean? 
So, and it wasn't really no beef like that. Everybody was cool because we still cool with all the niggas we grew up with right now. Yeah, absolutely. I call them right now and they're going to pick up. Same niggas. Not no we... fallouts or nothing, you know what I mean? At least the more, the more, uh, see Silverado and clean you know over I mean? here. Um, but yeah, man. Everyday like, shit yeah. with everybody seeing, yeah. pretty much. But like I said, it's a little bit of zombie land out in Fairfield, Fairfield. It's a little bit of zombie land, so we gonna change that, man. It's a lot of high level thinking over here. It's a lot of cur curation and creativity going on over here. A lot of history out here. Uh, we're gonna take you to some food spots too. We're gonna, we gonna bless y'all yeah. with a little bit of something. Yeah. But, Nah, this is Toledo's Park, man. Fairfield, California, 9453. Yay! Yeah, probably a lot of people don't talk about Toledo's, but we yeah. talk about Toledo's for sure. Yeah, we talk <laughs> about Toledo's for sure. <laughs> for real. Shout out Better Lark, too. All, everywhere in Fairfield that we didn't touch, you feel me? It's, it's, it's still active little, pot, little spots in Fairfield. You never know. You know what I'm saying? That's a, It could get ugly at some point, but... Uh, the whole point is to give the shine, uh, to overcast that dark and and, and uh, noise. You know what I'm saying? Because there's noise going on everywhere. Everybody, any, anybody can do noise, right? Anybody can do noise. So let's do some positivity. Let's revamp. Let's amplify. Um, this curation a lot of talent doing their thing right now, too. Um, so we're here to help. Fairfoot, I love you. Straight up. That's what it is. That's what it's going to be. Uh, yeah. What's, uh, any new music you have out? Yeah, so we just um, we just dropped Elko Flows, which is an EP um, that's kind of curated to ride to. That uh, if you at any ride outs, meetups, anything you riding on the way way, flap that thing in. It's called Elko Flows. We dropped a video for that, went a little yeah. viral. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the Bay, and um, from that success, uh, we dropped Elko. I mean, not Elko Flows. We dropped. Hella fun, feel right, which is a new video. Me and Don Bailey, Don Bailey, one of the hardest producers in Fairfield, and it's a thing for me to network with all producers and, and artists in Fairfield. That's upcoming, serious about that yeah, craft. That's yeah. upcoming. That's moving, and um, let's collaborate. Let's get the energy together. Let's build relationships. And uh, me and Don, we on our third series of Cali Winter Three. So we about to release Cali Winter Three. Um, that is. The first single is Hella Fun, Feel Right, which also went viral, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of like that Bay fun, that Bay feel. A lot of people have been saying, man, the Bay don't really got a sound, or, you know what I'm saying? We always try to copy other people's sounds yeah. and, and whatnot. Whoever's popping at the time, Whoever's what sound like. Yeah, yeah so um, one thing that <clears throat> we try to do with this project is kind of give that Bay-centric sound. Um, Northern California sound, Northern California sound, and um, make the textures right. It's a few different looks on there. It's five songs, um, but it's a little bit of game in there, you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, Cali Winter 3, February 3rd, uh, 2023. That's that's the date. So you can pre-order now. You can also go to the website, shop.fairfootiloveyou.com, and support me directly, support the art directly. From the artist, you know what I'm saying? Get a community link on there right now um, until it comes out on Apple Music and, and Spotify and whatnot. So, yeah, man, uh, that's what's going on right now. Hella fun, feel right, the video, Cali Winter 3, and uh, yeah, working our way up to Fairfoot I Love You 3, which is coming out end of the year. That's gonna, yeah. be, that's gonna be the one. That's gonna be the one. So we gradually, step by step, um, working, I just dropped a uh, produced a song for Stressmatic uh, okay. called Work. Stress Matic Matic 22 from the Federation back yeah. on his, you know what I'm saying? That, 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 them ones. So, yeah, uh, yeah kind of that, that pound beat is going to beat up the trunk. Look that one up, man. Shout out yeah. Stressmatic. Hell yeah, work. Um, yeah, so I'm producing, rapping, CEOing, platforming, entrepreneuring, you know what I'm saying? Doing a whole bunch of everything. Um, I got my hands in hella shit. For real. What made you do all that? Um, I, 
like different hats. Yeah. <laughs> I like to put on. Did you start off as a, as a rapper first, and you just had to learn everything in order to further your career? Um, I started off as a producer. Honestly, I'm a producer at heart first, okay. and then I had to rap over my beats. I'm like, I got the beats. I got to rap over them. Bro rapped over it, and then, uh, yeah, producer at heart, rapper. Um, I guess producer rapper. I guess simultaneously, but uh, the marks came with that, and then after that, I'm a, I'm a business. Minded person, excuse me. I'm a business minded person, so my family always makes fun of me because I'm always good. They make fun of me for being not cheap, but always good with money. Yeah. So, uh, shoes. I got into shoes, just selling shoes. You know what I'm saying? Created a business from that. Um, it's just something I naturally like to do, and then try to find a way to make money off something that I like to do. That's what it is. Yeah. I like to make clothes. I've been making clothes when I was in high school too. Like you can ask stress and all them. Uh, choose up cheese, all them. I was making clothes for them back in the day. Custom shit. Custom shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, just found a way to make money. And and everything you was doing. Just try to find yeah, a way to make up. money. Not be thirsty with it, but create that value. Hustle. Yeah, everything's a hustle. Create that value, and if it's if raw, motherfuckers gonna fuck with you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, man. And I think it's, you gotta be like that nowadays, bro. Like You gotta be well around. You never know where a play is at. You never know, you never know. So, what's your uh, process like when you're in the studio making a, a beat? That's funny. Process making a beat, it could go a few different ways. It can go from a sample that I liked. It could go from if it's an original. I'm just. I usually start with a bass. Honestly, that bass line yeah. is crucial. Yeah. Or that that boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Not necessarily the eight oh eights, but just like the mm, mm, boom, 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 boom. You know what I'm saying? I feel like the Bay Area is kind of home. I don't want to say that baseline, but just that mobby. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, that's that's what's moving. And usually that sound don't go out at, until the end of the beat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's usually the driving force to the beat. Um, and then you add the drums around it. Uh, I usually do headphones, honestly. Yeah. I don't, like, as a reason, yeah, I haven't yeah, been yeah, like, yeah, listening yeah, to it loud. Yeah. Just here. Um, it could suffer, my, my, my mixes could suffer a little bit from that, but uh, I like that slap. I like to hear it close, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, but I I go by, as a producer, as bass head. So, usually my beats is like thick, like yeah. that. <laughs> um, when you see the wave, it's hella thick, and uh, it's usually bass heavy. So you usually gotta turn it down uh, at some places, or usually his parts of the speakers that you would never heard before. Um, yeah, that's usually how it is, but samples too. I can whip up samples crazy. Um, I just had uh, someone over and I was playing some, uh, like a Boozy sample, then I played some Grover Washington sample, then I played a Paul Hardcastle sample. So I'm all over the place with samples. Um, I remember I used to sample like Sanford and Son, like more themey, Shows or, or, or sounds, Willy Wonka. I sampled random shit. So, yeah, man, I, I really kind of like trap myself in the production. Yeah, and uh, kind of work from my way out of the music. What about your process when you're writing a song? Writing a song is uh, a little bit more. I wouldn't say strategic, but um more reflective of what I'm feeling at the moment. Um, whatever mood you're in. Whatever mood I'm in. Um, so it can kind of be in certain pockets where I'm a little bit more creative than others. But I try to record every day. Every single day. Every day? Every oh, day. Shit. Try to record. I got the lab at the crib. Yeah. I'm waking up in the crib. Like I force myself to walk by the, the studio and like I got it there. I, yeah. There's no way I cannot record. And I usually wake up I usually go to sleep, honestly, with hearing something. Like, usually when I'm falling asleep, I hear either a song or I'll hear a melody to a beat. And I end up waking up and trying to recreate that sound. Um, most times. Yeah. Uh, other times, like, I just force myself to go in there and um, create. Create. And uh, writing, 
sometimes I write, sometimes I don't write, sometimes I just go in and just record, punch in, sometimes I'll go back and finish a song that I wrote. Yeah. Um, but it all depends. Sometimes I just write hooks and record hooks all day. I learned that from 50 Cent. Just record nothing but hooks. So you have songs already halfway done. Yeah, people just lay verses. The verses. And when you collaborate with people, most of the time they just want songs yeah. ready. Like just I, I want I just want to rap, right? So it kind of works for that shopping stuff and um, having stuff there so it's ready to go. What made you get a, uh, have the studio at your house? I've always had my studio at my house. Always. I was telling the stress that um, ever since he know me, even when I went to LA, I've always had a studio and ready to go. Ready to go. I've always been like an engineer. I'm a I'm an engineer producer. All that like I do everything. Yeah. So um, I needed to have that. I don't feel right if I don't have that. So ever since I was a kid, and they used to come to my house in Vacaville at Alamo Gardens. <laughs> um, I had the uh, inbox. I've had Digi Design O2. I've had Focus Rights. I've had what is it now Apollos. So. I've always needed the urge and the and have to have the tools to be creative at all times when I wanted to because I like you never know when stuff's gonna happen. Yeah, when it's flowing through your head, oh, you got a couple of bars left. I can just go lay this go down real quick right yeah. now, and then you end up with a song. Yeah, like and that song does numbers because you created it at that moment. You know what I'm saying? So capturing that moment or having the ability to capture that moment is half the battle. Yeah, you, know, you never know. Uh, project, what project, if somebody's never heard of you before, what project should they listen to to just even, be like, okay, that's the one, to, to, to learn you? To learn me. To learn me. Um, Cali Winter. I think Cali Winter is a good, uh, if you're not from California or you know what I'm saying, you want, you're from a different area, Cali Winter. If you're from out here, I think Fairfield, I love you too. It's a good stamping point. Um, it's, a, it's a slept on record, and there's a lot of collaborations with a lot of artists from Fairfield, and um, powerful messages in those songs. So I think Fairfield, I Love You Too is a good starting point to kind of work your way. And then Cali uh, Winter. Cali Winter, and okay. then my other EPs like uh, Out the P, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Real Boy with Architects. Um, yeah. You, you'll see the catalog. Also, Trapped in the Music. That's a slept on one. Trapped in the Music. Trapped in the Music. Trapped in the Music. That's a, that's one that's a little uh, hot, brash. Yeah. Um, kind of a, a against the industry type of thing. So it's kind of the philosophy. I'm being locked in the music. I'm trapped in it. I'm trying to get out. Like you're in the matrix of music. So that's a good one. So okay. kind of a con conceptual one. But... Uh, yeah, we rocking. We live in the yeah. flesh. That's CEO yeah. right there too. Yeah, what's happening? What's happening? Thanks for coming through. Nico, how you doing, man? How you doing? How you doing? Yeah. What's up with you, doggy? How you doing, man? Yeah. So that's a good starting point. It's a good starting point. Yeah. Uh -huh. So um, what about the kicks? What was your first kicks that made you get into loving shoes? Shoes, probably twos. Ironically. Jordan 2s? Yes. Damn, that's the one everybody don't even like. like I that. know. Ironically, they was the first ones I bought. They was the probably the black, gray, and red ones. They slept on. I think it was crimson ones. Yeah. Uh, crimson 2s. But, uh, yeah, that was the first ones that I bought. Bought. And then probably like the 14, the white and red 14s. Yeah. Those were another ones I had. And, um, yeah. But uh, I did get on the wave for the ones before the wave kind of happened. I was like 20. I mean, I guess people been on ones forever, but like the real, real wave, like 2015, 2013, 2014, I was not wearing nothing but ones every, all, all year, literally all year ones. So that's kind of uh, the resurge. Yeah. But um, I'm a shoe head. I'm a shoe head, dog. Like, I need to get rid of some, actually. <laughs> I need to get rid of what some. What size are you so they know? They can tap in. I'm, I'm 12, 11 and a half. So if you're 12 yeah. and 11 and a half, I got some heat. Yeah. I got some heat, for real. So if you need that for your feet, let you know. Four sneakerhead, four sneakerheads, follow us on IG. We're going to plug you, for real. 
Mm-hmm. Man, he do everything. So what else do you want to let him know? <laughs> 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 what else I do? Do <laughs> you let him know? You know uh, what I mean? Um, no, man. I uh, I just try to make it work, man. I do. No, that's dope. Uh, obviously we do the brand, um, the clothing, um, Freestyle Fridays. Yeah, let him know about that. Man. Yeah. yeah. So Freestyle Friday was uh, was an idea me and Bro came up with. Well, Bro, I think came up with this and just kind of like. How are we gonna amplify artists from the city that we that we mess with, that uh, and not make it about us? Yeah. Um, so it was like, so I used to have a radio show. <laughs> That's another thing I used to do. Yeah. Uh, I used to have a radio show in uh, in L.A. at Dash Radio, at Ski TV, and at Young California. Um, so I've already had a platform where I like to we showcase like, yeah. and, and get people. They flowers. Yeah. Um, like I remember I had Cool John and JN and all the uh, HBK for the most part out there showing love to them. Like Shy Glizzies, all the people that came to the West Coast, for the most part I tried to showcase love. Like Young Dolph. Um, yeah, a lot of people. But I always knew the importance of providing a platform and um, showcasing light on people that I, I just liked and, and messed with. So that's what we've done. With the Fair Fight Love You Freestyle, that's what we uh, are going, going to continue to do um, with showcasing talents. Like that's just it takes a, takes a, a skill to know talent, but it also um, that's my part of giving back too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like giving back to the next generations and giving back to anybody, just putting back into the music. So you shoot one every Friday here, and then it's live, or when does it drop? Yeah, so it's every Friday for the most part. And it drops on Sundays or Mondays, you know what I'm saying, depending on the times. But, um, yeah, we shot, uh, we like to do it in bulk. Yeah. Um, but there should be a live on our Instagram on every Friday. Uh, Fairfoot, I love you Instagram. Usually around 3 to 4 o'clock and we'll broadcast it and showcase uh, or let you guys know when it's going to happen. But we post it up on YouTube and uh, our Instagram that you can comment and choose the winner. You know what I'm saying, show your love. Uh, we just our recent one was Young Tut from Fairfield. Um, yeah, and it's, you don't got to be from Fairfield to do it, but we like to um, keep it local as much as possible. But we're open, so if you're an artist and you're excited about your craft and you really want to perform and showcase, hit us up, Fairfield. I love you. Um, yeah, and we try to get you on here, but uh, it's it's our duty to do that, bro. Like. The reason why y'all here doing it to us, yeah. like it's just we paying it forward to them too. So we super humble and super thankful that y'all doing this. Um, yeah, it, it, this goes a long way because it ain't too yeah. many people that showcase and what people are doing, right? Yeah, they're not. Like, you gotta go. It's only some rare people that's doing it, and it's kind of biased, right? So y'all, we appreciate it, bro. For yeah, real. yeah. Um, Likewise. Yeah, and I know you've been doing your thing. I was telling you before you. You you a mover shaker out here. You a fixture and a factor in the bay. So we trying to love. do the same thing. That's all it it's is. Love. We just trying to do the same thing. So what's your goal for the uh, the store? What's you know what's the plans in the future? <sighs> plans in the future are to keep expanding. Um, the goal that we've always had was to get everybody in Fairfield in a shirt. That's over one hundred sixty thousand people in the population. We probably what maybe a thousand somewhere right now so we got a long way to go yeah we got a long way to go but if y'all listening right now um we're gonna work on that so everybody in fairfield we want to have a fairfield i love yeah. you shirt we're working on fairfield i love you day um we have a lot more events going on we do a charity game that's once every year that we give a donation back to the fairfield basketball High. game basketball yeah. game that we uh make sure that we give a platform to everybody that played, that wants to play, and um, we donate back to the Fairfield High basketball program and the athletic program in all. And all. So um, that's one of the initiatives we do. Um, Fairfield I Love You Day is coming up. More collaborations coming up with other local initiatives. Uh, we got a collab coming with the Funky Chicken. That's shh. If y'all know the Funky Chicken, the Funky Chicken is a staple in Fairfield. Is like a uh, used to be a record store, clothing store, owned by Chauncey Banks. Um, kind of had his hand in a lot of uh, Fairfield success musically. Um, so yeah, 
we uh, got a collab with them coming up. And just, you know, organic collabs. Um, we did the collab with Stressmatic. Uh, yeah. More shoe, a shoe event coming soon that we're going to do. And um, okay, when people just come and sell their shoes, that's a shoes of post. So flex. just like, you know how they got the sneaker con. Yeah. They got the uh, link up out here uh, and different other things. But we're going to do one in Fairfield. It's going to yeah. go crazy. It's going to go crazy. We're going to be working on that right now. So um, what else? See y'all. I'm sure we got some other stuff. I mean, you hit everything on the head. Yeah. Most part, we got four sneaker heads coming. We, we branch out with that. We got some socks coming. Got some socks coming. Um, yeah. You know, we're just trying to uh, not limit ourselves wherever the mind go. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think once you have that thought process, you know what I mean? It's like, what's next? And you just keep going. You make a list, scratch that shit off when you get there. You feel what I'm saying? That's really what it is, man. It's just kind of creating a legacy. Um, Within this, with the clothing, sneakerhead, whatever, like we dibble and dabble in, we just want to create in that field. You know, we don't really. I mean, it's definitely good to get inspiration and be a consumer of different things. But the way I think, the way he think, it's like, man, shit, we could do this shit too. Yeah, everything. You, see, <laughs> everything, you know what I mean? That's a good point. So, every, yeah. every single thing yeah. that we do, how can we make it ours? Yeah. <laughs> so that. How can I put my flavor on it? How can I put my flavor? That be clothing. Whether or not you see my name on like a back of a Carhartt jacket or something, it's just like it's me, it's mine. Um, but personalize it, make it Fairfoot. I love you. Brand it. Uh, glasses, everything you can think of. Jewelry. Jewelry. Yeah. Um, we also got some workshops coming up too. So we tapped in with a lot of people who are not only artists but uh, movers and shakers yeah. within the industry that are from Fairfield. Shout out my guy Don Prito who's a, a huge with um, Golden Voice and uh, managing a lot of other artists. Like, put on uh, shows, yeah. Yeah, put on shows. And um, we got something coming with him in February that's going to be like a uh, free game workshop um, where it's all creatives, people from different uh, fields in the industry, yeah. and we're going to let creatives come in here and get some game. So we're working on that. Uh, uh, that's dope. See, that's what people need. That's I know, need. I know. So we're working on that. Um, and it's gonna be some people that can speak from their experiences, you know what I'm saying, within the industry. So, um, that's the one thing to watch out for in uh, February. It's gonna be huge. Um, yeah. Charity game, uh, Fairfield. I love you, day. Fairfield. Is that gonna be on seven oh seven? That's so we were trying to play that out. We were trying to play that out, but um, I don't know. Might be in. August, it might be in, you know, June, um, but we're planning that out. We also got a three-year anniversary, three-year anniversary coming up. I think February, February marks our third year for being here, and that's uh, yeah. we was Sounds almost good. we was almost shut down by um, COVID. So we here and we still breathing. How was y'all working through COVID? I was a little, uh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> Hey, dang, a little yeah. bit of a, of a survival tactic. Yeah. We um, literally they told us to stop the store <laughs> as we opened. And um, we did a sponsor a student thing that was super instrumental because the kids that year couldn't celebrate them being a student in high school. So right. like graduation, all yeah. that. So we uh, did a sponsor a student where the parents can sponsor a student and make them kind of feel good. We had face mask on the uh, merch that we made. It said class of 2020 with the face mask on there in different colors for each school. So um, that was a good pivoting moment. And um, yeah, I guess the shoes, but that we really had the shoes already. So that really yeah. wasn't a pr uh, pivot move. But um, yeah, just being active, doing the Matt Garcia Foundation uh, collaborations um, and just keep moving forward and collaborate with whoever, whoever's doing stuff out here. Let's do it. Now that COVID's done, how has the, uh, the last year been? <clears throat> Interesting. Um, because after COVID, a lot of people got money that, way, that yeah. didn't never have money. So a lot of spending going on <laughs> um, and kind of trickled out. But then this past year was interesting because you can see um, that with the ideas that we're coming up with, People are in tune to newer things. They want newer ideas. 
and um, you know, uh, reasonable, reasonable price points, I should say, in terms of the business. Um, sneaker market is a little down. Yeah, it is. It is a little down, but with anything, it goes up and down. So, um, true hustlers will be tested, or will, will a true hustler will be shown when when, when tough yeah. times happen. So. We're going to keep working. We're going to keep hustling, figuring it out. But um, I feel like we are transitioning from out of that uh, COVID period into a place of uh, growth. So it's exciting. It's exciting. New products, new yeah. things coming. Um, and the world is open, open, open. <laughs> Hopefully Everybody's forever. outside. Everybody's outside, too. Weather getting better, too. So, yeah, man. Um how can people look you up if they want to tap in? So it's by B Y B J A N B I J A N everywhere, uh, all platforms. Follow me on Spotify, Apple Music, just B I J A N. My real name. I ain't hiding from nobody. I ain't none of that. It's me. Okay. Um, yeah, find me on there. Fairfield, I love you. Make sure you follow everywhere. Fairfield, I love you is the brand. And that's kind of where we, uh, the mainstay in the hub. So, uh, Fairfield, I L O V E, the letter U, everywhere. And I'm out here in Fairfield. You know where to come, 3067 Travis Boulevard, Fairfield, California, 94534. You feel me? That's where we at. Right here, right next to Kinders, Huckleberries, Baskin Robbins. It's a safe, it's a safe space. It's a, uh, yeah, it's a money movement over here, man. We're trying to get everybody. Inspired to make some more money and collaborate with other body, with every, with other people, with other creators. All right, and this lovely is respect that you came here and you came hollered at us for real because we want to bring everybody to Fairfield. That's yeah. our whole thing. Yeah, if you're in if Fairfield, you... tap in Fairfield. I love you. Look up the store. Hell yeah. You know what I mean, hey, you want to freestyle, freestyle fight. You see, they got the thing rocking. So and you got to come with that up. though too. Yeah. You got to come no with that because it's been yeah. some man. It's been some know. heaters on that thing, man. Yeah. <laughs> No, nah, it's real love. I appreciate the relationship and, and the communication and y'all amplifying Fairfield because this is big. It's big. Fairfield, I love you. Yeah, real. it's the pull-up show, man. Directed by Bro Jackson. Westbound ENT, this young monk. Hey, man, where can we pull up to next, man? Tell us below. Subscribe. Westbound ENT. Let's go. Yeah. My boy, I appreciate Come it. Come on. Man. For real. Easy. For real, young monk. I'm glad we got to officially make this a, a official. Shh.